numbers so they could report how much they... <laughs> oh, God! You know, then here you have uh, the ministers, uh, and, and, and they're taking better, more care of the pastor than they're taking care of the body of Christ. The people in the body of Christ getting all their bills shut off. Amen? They don't have no food in their cupboards. Oh, my, 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 I go on and on about that, but we'll end it there. <laughs> Amen. So people in high-ranking places need to make sure that the people who are considered underneath them are doing what they are supposed to do. Amen. Isn't that called undermining? They call it undermining. The king had to put Daniel in the lion's den because of his own rules. There was something called the king's rule. If you look in Esther, I believe yeah, Esther 119, it tells you, you can also read it, it mentions about the king's law. The king's, that's what's called the king's law. And see, this law was created about putting people in the lion's den if they don't bow down to the king. And therefore, the king had to put Daniel. Not only did the king have to put Daniel, well, he could have really changed the law because he was a king. But I believe the king put Daniel in the lion's den, not just because he didn't want to make himself look like a fool by, by creating this law, by going by this law, but also because the king had seen, uh, between chapters uh, Daniel 1 and, and Daniel 6, the king was seeing the the, uh, the 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 uh, ministry that Daniel had and the miracles and the signs and the wonders that God was doing in Daniel's life and in the king's life because remember now Daniel was interpreting dreams and everything for the king. Amen. So I believe the king was 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 uh, uh, developing his faith in Daniel's God all along. He might not have told anybody, but he believed in God. He believed. He saw. He saw. He showed more faith in Daniel's God by putting Daniel in the lion's den than getting Daniel out of trouble by forcing his power over the princes. Think about it. He showed more faith by putting Daniel in the lion's den. Why? Why do I say that? Because he knew that God wouldn't allow anything to happen to Daniel around those lions. I don't know about you. I call it faith. Amen. Now, uh, chapter 6, verse 14 says that the king labored about this. Chapter 6, verse 14, I'll read it. It says, and then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. See, the king, his heart was saddened about this whole situation. He didn't want to do that. He loved Daniel. He had a love for Daniel. Amen. He labored. He was upset. He moaned, possibly prayed. He was in deep thinking about this situation. Because the law of Medes and Persia, which is Iraq and Iran, okay, it could not change. Amen. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Chapter 6, verse 16. Which says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, This is what he told Daniel, now see, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Notice he didn't say, May he deliver you, or he might deliver you, or or think about it, Daniel, or he could deliver you. He said, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. That's faith if you ask me. That's encouragement. Confidence in God. The king had confidence in God. He believed in the divine deliverer. Amen. By now, he believed that Daniel's God was a divine deliverer. Even the king fasted and couldn't sleep. His soul was unrested. He was worried about Daniel. The king knew good when he saw it. And this is my, my message to you today. If you live a righteous life, higher ups will see that you're a good person. You will attract good. If you live good, you attract good. If you live bad, 
you attract bad. Amen. You attract thieves and liars and deceivers and such. Daniel was good. Verse 22 says uh, that they found uh, innocency in him. God found innocency in Daniel. Verse 22 says, My God has sent this angel, his angel, and has shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. See, the, the king ran down to see if Daniel was okay, and Daniel was still there. He was still there laying with the, laying with the, laying with the lions, laying with the enemy, and the enemy couldn't even hurt him. <laughs> How many of us are believers of Jesus Christ and we could be laying right with the enemy and the enemy can't touch you? You know why the enemy can't touch you? Because Jesus said so. Amen. It's that simple. The enemy cannot touch you because Jesus said so. All right? Just like the snake. The snake might bite you physically, but he ain't going to hurt you. Nothing's going to happen to you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Everything that rises up against you shall fall. Please believe that. Even if you write it down on a piece of paper or type it up on your computer and print it out in little pieces, little slivers, and cut it and put it on your refrigerator and on your doorpost, put it all over on your bedpost, put on anything that rises up against you shall fall. Amen. Daniel had spent the night with the lions in the lion's den and did what he was supposed to do. So guess what? The king had to let him go. The king set him free. Verse 23 says that Daniel believed in his God. See, all this happened because Daniel believed in his God. He did not second guess him and say, oh, well, you know, I believe if Daniel would have went in there with fear in him, if he would have been dropped down into that lion's den and had fear in him, they would have ate him up. It reminds me of the King Saul. Mm. Everybody remember King Saul and David? David came up behind him and became king. What did King Saul do? He always feared something. You know, uh, Samuel told him, he said, I'm going to be gone. It's going to take me a couple days to get to you, but don't slaughter any of the of the, of the uh, lambs until I get there. I'll do that. It was up to it was up to Samuel, the prophet, to do that. So uh, King Saul looked around and he looked up on all the mountains and in the woods and he saw all of his enemies surrounding him. And what happened? He got scared. Fear entered into him. And we all know how all that ended up, right? He lost his kingdom. Samuel told him, because of your disobedience, see, you lost your kingdom. And not only that, Samuel went to a witch and asked the witch what he was supposed to do for the next day whenever the war was coming on. And he lost the war. He died. His son got killed. And it was over. Fear. If you believe that something bad is going to happen, most likely it will. Amen? Have no fear that your spouse is going to leave you. Have no fear that your child's going to flunk in school. 